Do you find yourself picking at the back half of fantasy football drafts this year? Well, no worries. Today, we're going to teach you how to dominate the turn. Yeah. Analytics, off the chain, all the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline of Nation, we running the game. What is going on, Headline Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headlines. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today. We're going to be talking about how to dominate the turn in your fantasy football drafts here in 2022. Now, before we get into this mock draft, which we're going to follow along together with, I got I to gotta make sure, have you guys signed up for our viewer leagues yet? This overall tournament is almost full. There's not very many slots left. It's going to be a huge 32 divisions of 12 teams each that we're all going to compete against each other to crown the overall champion of Headliner Nation. So this is what you need to do. As soon as this video is over, head over to Fantrax.com and set up your free account using the referral code HEADLINERS. After you do that, come back to this pinned comment and there is a join league link that you need to click to get yourself in. It's going to fill up fast. Don't wait. Do it right now. Looking forward to doing that. Prizes are going to be announced here pretty soon, but it's free for you to enter. So no matter what they are, it's going to be like money in your pocket, right? It's money out of my pocket, but it's going to be going to you, the community. So we're looking forward to doing that. And then secondly, don't forget, we're getting dangerously close to giving away this signed throwback full-size Aaron Jones Packers helmet. In order to get in on that giveaway, all you got to do is have your free account signed up at Pristine Auction using the code word headliners and then get your draft guide ordered by July 31st. We're going to pick a random winner and as long as you have yours purchased by that time, you are entered into the giveaway. Looking forward to announcing that. But now is the time we're going to dive right into the draft. Let's just talk ourselves through it, have a good time with it, and kind of be honest about what could have gone a little bit differently. Let's take a look. And here we go, half PPR, 12 teams, pretty standard for the most part, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, no kicker, but we do have a defense and three flex spots here trying to go a little bit deep, so we're just going to kick back and kind of watch this together, see how the draft unfolds as you're watching. If you have comments or something you notice, leave it down below in the comment section, something we can discuss here later on, but like usual, most mock drafts that are done all the time on every platform, it doesn't really seem to matter. You know you're going to get a lot of running backs early. No difference here in this first round. What is this? The first uh, eight picks, seven of them were running backs. So kind of get used to it. You're only looking at maybe one, two, or maybe three wide receivers that come off the board in the first round. We see Jefferson going at the 1.10. And then at the 11 spot here, where are they going to go? Jamar Chase. So three wide receivers in this first round. I'm pick number 12. So I'm taking a look at everything, and I'm saying, you know what? I got to get my running backs now. Because if I don't, by the time it gets all the way back to me at the 3-12 and 4-1, the way that this draft board is going, I'm not going to have much of a choice. So I went Nick Chubb and Aaron Jones. The safe and steady, solid RB1 in Nick Chubb the potential high upside guy in Aaron Jones. Just after that, three more running backs off the board. And then another couple wide receivers, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Debo Samuel going back to back to back. Alvin Kamara right here at the 2-8. Uh, Dog's breakfast, it looks like he had Najee in the first. So I, I, I love the solid pick in the first. Alvin Kamara for me, though, is just an avoid right now. Until we know what's happening off the field, I can't invest a second round pick on this guy personally. Followed up by Antonio Gibson, another guy I don't love this year. Uh, not how about let me rephrase that? I love Antonio Gibson. Ron Rivera does not for whatever reason. Then we followed up with a couple Cowboys, Lamb, Elliott, and Kelsey there to round out the second round. I like what the uh, the first overall team is doing here. They got Jonathan Taylor, Travis Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill, and overall pretty solid lineup going for a more balanced approach. Seeing some wide receivers come off the board with Mark Andrews here as well, Mike Evans. Jalen Waddell, Keenan Allen, James Conner, David Montgomery, and then T. Higgins. So we got a team sitting right here at what? What is this? The eighth pick, Cook, Adams, and Higgins. What's his running back situation going to look like here by passing one in the third round? Starting to run pretty thin, right? So we had Akers, Jacobs, and Etienne off the board. This is where I'm going to say, all right, what do we got? Uh, because I get two picks back-to-back, -back, a lot of 
you know, potential risk at the wide receiver position. And I don't know if I want to take too much of a risk. So I went with Michael Pittman, who I believe is a solid floor every single week wide receiver, and then followed him up with, in my opinion, a top three tight end here this year. I mean, hopefully Trey Lance starts for the San Francisco 49ers. And if so, we can see more of a vertical George Kittle this year, which I absolutely love. So I've started off Chubb, Jones, Pittman, and Kittle. Honestly, I love this start. Damian Harris, Elijah Mitchell off the board after that, followed by Mike Williams, Brees Hall, Dalton Schultz, and A.J. Brown. So A.J. Brown, another one of those guys that obviously he's the alpha in that offense. I just don't know if the volume's going to be there. Followed by Deontay Johnson, D.J. Moore, Cordero Patterson in the fourth. Way too early, in my opinion. Now, when you look at the draft board, I understand, I think, what they're doing here. There's not a whole lot of running backs left, but I don't... Just because I like Cordero Patterson doesn't mean that I'm expecting what we saw last year. And now this guy is your running back too. And that terrifies me. We see guys coming off the board afterwards, like even like an A.J. Dillon. Personally, I think A.J. Dillon would have been a more solid running back too than Cordero Patterson. Miles Sanders a little bit risky. Sure, J.K. Dobbins says he's going to be good to go to start the season. Who am I to question the man? I may have taken either one of those guys over Cordero Patterson, at least in the fourth round. He's somebody that probably would have lasted a few more rounds. We had Hollywood Brown, the first quarterback in the fifth round. Josh Allen, honestly, I don't hate that. You didn't have to reach in the first two or three rounds, so I don't mind it. Followed by Sanders, Pitts, Godwin. Ugh, man, the, the team here at the number six spot is worrying me a little bit because you got A.J. Brown, Chris Godwin back to back here. That's a lot of risk with your wide receivers because Godwin may not even be 100% to start the year. Let me go ahead and Kareem Hunt, Darren Waller, Justin Herbert, D.K. Metcalf, Amari Cooper. And in my back to back picks, I'm trying to still play it somewhat a little bit safe. In my opinion, my wide receivers I know going forward aren't going to have a super high ceiling. So I kind of need those safe floor guys in hopes that I can kind of make up the difference with my running backs. So I went with Allen Robinson as my wide receiver too. And then I knew I had to go running back again because of the way the board was falling. I love Tony Pollard this year. Tony Pollard in the sixth round is a little bit early for me, but I'm not going to be picking again until the end of the seventh and no way he makes it back that far. Tony Pollard, in my opinion, could be a guy that's going to flirt with 225 touches and could have top 15 to 18 potential. So I took him in the beginning of the sixth round, followed by CEH, Lamar Jackson, Brandon Cooks, Patrick Mahomes, Darnell Mooney, CEH, going all risk here, going all risk at that number six pick, right? Or actually, excuse me, the number, yeah, number six pick, got A.J. Brown, Chris Godwin, CEH, Boomer bust right here. Amon Ra, then D Hop in the sixth is a little early, but I don't hate it. I'm still somebody who's stashing D Hop everywhere I can. Followed by Renfro, Judy, going back to back with Gabe Davis and Rashad Penny. Followed by the the bajillion dollar man now, Kyler Murray, Adam Thielen, Dallas Godare, Cortland Sutton. Then we got James Cook in the seventh. That's super early, man. This this team is going all out. I mean, they're just grasping at straws right now. Then we got Stafford, Michael Thomas, Rashad Bateman. Love myself some Rashad Bateman. Followed by Tyler Lockett, TJ Hawkinson. And then I'm back on the clock here, end of the seventh. What is going to be available? I'm going with Juju. Now, a lot of people don't love Juju Smith-Schuster, but he's going to be a target hog in that offense. Is he going to be the deep threat guy? No, he's not, but he can easily accumulate over 100 receptions this year in that offense, and I love that. Then they left me Joey B, the Tiger King, Joe Burrow, right there at the beginning of the eighth round, and I'm going to go ahead and take it. Followed up by Jalen Hurts, Devin Singletary, Zach Ertz, Melvin Gordon, and Mark Ingram in the eighth is a huge, huge reach. I don't love that. Now, I understand the thought process, right? There's a good chance that we, we don't see Kamara for a chunk of games this year, but we don't know that yet, and there's too many good players still left on the board that I wouldn't have done that yet. Mark Ingram probably would have been there down after the 12th round or so. I would have waited on that pick. Then we had Dak, Devontae Smith, Russell Wilson, Kenneth Walker, followed by the man Bobby Trees, and then back to the number one overall team going back to back here and selecting Brandon Ayuk and wait for it, Drake London. Don't hate that. I'm going to follow that up with Daryl Henderson here. Daryl Henderson, another early pick in the ninth. I understand that the thought process. I really do. I'm just worried that that, that early in the draft, you're too reliant on him. Followed by Michael Carter. 
Isaiah Spiller, two guys that I believe will have a bigger role than Daryl Henderson, at least to start the year. Uh, more than likely, I probably would have taken them over Daryl Henderson at this point of the draft. Same with Ramondre Stevenson, right? We know Ramondre is going to get right around 200 touches in that offense. To me, still a little bit safer. Then we're going Christian Kirk, following up with Chase Claypool, Alexander Madison. I like Claypool this year. Am I alone? Anybody else like Claypool out there? Traylon Burks in the ninth, a little bit early for me. Russell Gage, safe option at least to start the year. And Tyler Boyd, I wanted Tyler Boyd right here. Full disclosure, being that I had Joe Burrow, I wanted to grab Tyler Boyd. Uh, Elijah Moore ended up falling to me, and I will gladly take Elijah Moore and then follow him up with Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines is another one of those running backs we know. We know it from history. Matt Ryan wants to check down to his running backs. That just fits the skill set of Naheem Hines so well in a run-heavy offense. That's why I took him here in the 10th, knowing he wouldn't make it back to me in the 11th. Then we had Gus Edwards, Alan Lazard, Rashad White, Kadarius Toney, MVS, Jarvis Landry, and Tom Brady come off the board, followed by Michael Gallup, Chris Olave in the 10th. A little early, a little for me. Followed by Ronald Jones. Oof, man. Worried about running backs for that number two team right here. Going back to back with Daryl Henderson and Ronald Jones. Luckily, you got a running back early. Team one following up with Aaron Rodgers, Kenneth Gainwell. Coming back here to the number two overall team. I think it says Mr. McKinney, McKinsey. A defense. Dude, we can't be doing defenses this early. We just can't. Defenses in the 11th round. We got to wait to at least like the 14th, maybe even the 13th. Can't be going deep, especially with the Dallas defense. That's somewhat head-scratching to me. Uh, Garrett Wilson, J.D. McKissick, then another couple defenses come off the board with Irv Smith Jr. Letting Irv swerve this year. Followed up by Jacoby Myers, who I, I think is a great, solid late-round wide receiver that could rack up some receptions. Sky Moore, a lot of hype around Sky Moore. I don't think he can fulfill the hype levels that have surrounded him here this offseason. Another defense with Tampa Bay. New Orleans, and then I'm back on the clock here. Where am I going to go? Give me fantasy Bigfoot, Devontae Parker, a potential number one wide receiver in the 11th round, and then follow him up with Daryl Williams, who somebody was a top 15 running back last year, over a 1,000-yard total season with Kansas City, now backing up James Conner. A lot of people don't believe that James Conner can stay healthy once again. If he can't, Daryl Williams could be in line for a lot of work, and we know he can catch passes. Then we got Damian Pierce, Dawson Knox, Rondell Moore, Khalil Herbert, Marlon Mack, Chargers defense, Trey Lance. Going two quarterbacks here in the first 12 rounds, I don't think that's something that I would specifically do. A lot of times I won't even draft two quarterbacks. I don't even think I'd do in this draft here. Uh, followed up by DJ Chark, Mike Gusecki, uh, Jamal Williams, and James Robinson. Kenny Galladay and Hunter Henry then coming off the board. I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my personal preference, but I'm liking the team that I'm putting together right now. Chris Carson, Sony Michelle, Cole Komet, and Big Bob Tunyon. Uh, I don't mind the back-to-back, not back-to-back, but the two tight ends late here uh, for that number seven team. I don't mind it. Do I love it? I may have waited till the very last round and taken somebody else, especially since Big Bob Tunyon's coming off that torn ACL. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we try to find somebody a little bit safer since both those guys are coming back off of injury. Then we go A.J. Green, Miko Hardman, uh, TDP, uh, Tyler Algier, Van Jefferson. I went with Jahan Dotson. He's going to be my high upside rookie wide receiver in hopes that he can get some extra volume, some big plays in Washington. And then I took my defense second to last round, going with the Rams, looking for playmakers, obviously, followed by Corey Davis. Albert, are you okay? Denver, Tim Patrick, Gerald Everett, Robbie Anderson, and then we have Jamison Williams right here in the 14th. Miami's defense, Pat Fryermuth, that late is great value. See, Pat Fryermuth would have been my choice over Robert Tunyon for that team there. That would have been a lot safer choice, even, even Hunter Henry, in my opinion. Then with Haskins, Watson, the Colts defense, rounding out the last round here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the draft board overall and kind of see what we think about each team. I'm going to end it out here with Marvin Jones, Atlanta, Crowder, Njoku, Derek Carr, a couple more picks left, Kirk Cousins, a lot of people taking two quarterbacks. Remember, personally, I'm stacking up those wide receivers and, and running backs trying to find, uh, you know, a potential lottery pick this late in drafts. 
Then we're going uh, Paris Campbell, Matt Ryan, Donta Foreman, and then the last pick of the draft, another high upside rookie that could get some play late, Jalen Tolbert. Now, here is the overall draft board. And we can kind of look at each team here real quick, just kind of see what we like, what we don't like. We'll kick it off here at the first team overall. Love the balance start. After the balance start, though, actually, I can say the first five, six rounds, maybe even seven. If we want to look at Rashad Penny, being that this is a three flex league, I don't mind it whatsoever. Tyreek Hill, Gabe Davis, Brandon Ayuk, Drake London, a lot of risk at the wide receiver position. I mean, you really need some of these guys to pop off and live up to some of their hype. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers, obviously one of the best fantasy quarterbacks for a long time. Does he have enough weapons to throw to this year? Gainwell, uh, James Robinson, Kenny Galladay, really not guys that I expect you to ever really have to start. Don't mind the defensive pickup there at the end with the Colts. Second team here, Eckler, Elliott, start. Love that. Actually, Eckler, Elliott, and then Mark Andrews to start. That is that is a great start right there. I would love that start all day Long the wide receivers, McLaurin, uh, Hollywood Brown, Judy Woods. I don't mind it. I don't think there's any real high, high upside guys there, at least season long, but definitely some solid options. I could definitely see you, you know, starting Marquise Hollywood Brown and Jerry Judy a lot this year. Uh, Terry McLaurin, same thing goes for Terry. I think he's just going to have to split with a lot more people this year. The running back slate, Henderson, Jones, uh, Jamal Williams, Hassan Haskins. Not great depth, right? Because if anything happens to one of your first two guys, you really don't have anybody that's just like a plug-and-play type guy, even, even though it may be a lower ceiling, a little worrisome. Team three, McCaffrey, Lamb, Evans, Patterson. Obviously, I mean, the first three, Lamb, Evans, and McCaffrey, straight-up eggplant, right? Uh, loving Josh Allen in the fifth, too. Running back depth could be a little bit of an issue here. Maybe in the sixth and seventh round when you took a Renfro and a Thielen, Trust me, I love both those guys. Love those picks, but that gives you the four wide receivers and really hurts some of your running back depth there. I mean, getting Kenneth Walker, if anything happens to Rashad Penny, obviously great. Michael Carter sp splitting with Brees Hall. Chris Carson may never play football again. Uh, so having to rely on Cordero Patterson as your number two to start the year, slightly worrisome. Team four, Henry Gibson, Waddle Moore. I really don't mind that start. And then you have DeAndre Hopkins you'll get after week six, followed by Miles Sanders, uh, Isaiah Spiller, J.D. McKissick, Sony Michelle. So your running back depth isn't great, but you have potential there. Dallas Godair is your only tight end. Next team here, Dogs Breakfast. Talked about Kamara at the beginning of the draft. Then you went Allen, Deontay Johnson, Pitts, Amon Ross, Sutton, and Devontae Smith. Okay, I mean, do I do I hate it? No, overall, I don't. I think Keenan Allen, Deontay Johnson, obviously pretty safe options. Amon Ra, Cortland Sutton, Devontae Smith. I don't see a situation where you may use all of them. It probably would have been somewhere where I would have taken a running back in place of one of those three guys. Uh, more than likely for me, it probably would have been like a Devontae Smith, more than likely, just because I like him the least out of those three. We got Ramondre Stevenson, who I don't mind. The two quarterbacks we mentioned, uh, taking a defense still a little bit early. And then Cole Komet, David Njoku, don't really hate it. Jamison Williams, I love Jamison Williams. We may not even see him until like November-ish. Uh, next team, started off with Joe Mixon, Debo Samuel, and James Conner. Don't mind that out whatsoever. After that, though, there's a lot of risk. A.J. Brown, Chris Godwin, C.E.H., and James Cook. All four of those picks right there from rounds four, five, six, and seven are super risky. And personally, I don't like to take that many risks that early in the draft. One risk every four rounds is the rule that I try to follow. After that, you played it a little bit safer, right? Dak, Kirk, Landry, love that. Irv Smith is a tight end who I do like this year. The Chargers defense, great choice. We talked about Big Bob Tunyon at the time of the draft. I would have preferred somebody a little bit safer, being that Irv Smith is also coming off of an injury. Maybe like that Hunter Henry or Pat Fryermuth. Uh, then we got Robbie Anderson, Derek Carr, also took two quarterbacks, really don't need to do that. You can always stream that second guy if needed. Uh, next team up, went back-to-back -back wide receiver, Cup and Diggs. Ended up with running backs of Montgomery, Hunt, Ingram, and Mack. So now that we see that you went back-to-back -back wide receiver, it makes a little bit more sense why you went Ingram early. You're just hoping that Kamar gets suspended to start the season. You have Ingram for a first you know, four to six weeks, and then you can kind of figure it out after that. Hopefully that would work out, but if nothing happens to Kamara to start the season, you're going to be you're going to kind of be hurting for some running back depth here for sure. 
The wide receivers, though, obviously love it. Cup, Diggs, Mooney, Claypool. That is amaze balls right there. Same thing goes for you also, though. Two, two, two quarterbacks, not really needed. Next up, we got teammate. What do we got for running backs here? We got Cook, Hall, Gordon, Madison, and Herbert. So you handcuffed Cook, which is a pretty smart choice here. You also got Adams and Higgins to go along with Michael Thomas, Kadarius Toney, Jacoby Myers, Miko Hardman, and Tim Patrick. A lot of high upside players here, but a really safe choice, I, I think so, with, with Devontae Adams. So I, I don't really hate the, the wide receiver choices. Darren Waller in there. Don't mind that. You're going a little bit heavy Las Vegas with Waller and Adams. Uh, Michael Thomas, I mean, personally, I'm not a fan of Michael Thomas this year. The guy's basically given his organization the, the middle finger for two straight years, so kind of have to wait and see on that. Also got the Raiders defense last year. You must be, you got to be a Raiders fan, right? Definitely a Raiders fan? Let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, next up, we got Team 9, Swift, Barkley, and Akers. Okay, this may be, is it the only team? Yes, it's the only team that went three straight running backs to start. And boy, oh boy, are you going boom or bust with these picks. Love each individual player. But DeAndre Swift is somebody who we haven't really seen in a huge role as of yet. We expect it this year, but we haven't seen it yet. Saquon Barkley has disappointed a lot of people for a couple years. And then Cam Akers still kind of recovering, coming off of a torn Achilles. Didn't look like himself in the postseason of last year. So we really haven't seen much of him this year either. A lot of risk right there for your wide receivers. Williams, Cooks, Bateman, absolutely love that. I think you got great value with Cooks and Bateman there, and they could be the safest options for you weekly, and then Mike Williams slots into one of your flex plays. You got Ertz, Burks, White, Sky Moore, Rondell Moore. You got something for the last name Moore here. I'm thinking a lot a lot more in this team. TD Price, Denver, and then Paris Campbell at the end. Overall, solid. A lot of risk with this roster, though. Next up, the 10th team. Jefferson, Javante, Josh Jacobs, and Elijah Mitchell. I don't mind that. I really don't. Being that you went wide receiver first and still ended up with Javante, Jacobs, and Mitchell, that could have ended up a lot worse. So you still got your stud wide receiver one. You may not have the overall, you know, huge, huge ceilings at running back, but you got safer options. So I absolutely love that. Then you followed up with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Don't know if I would have taken both DK and Lockett, both Seattle wide receivers in an iffy situation with the quarterback there. Probably wouldn't have done that. Lamar Jackson, Devin Singletary, Probably going to lose a lot of work to James Cook, Russell Gage, Alan Lazard. I don't mind Russell Gage there whatsoever. Alan Lazard could definitely see some targets. Then Tampa Bay, Knox, Albert Ayoke, Tyler Algier, and Matt Ryan. Another late quarterback that I probably would have just taken a stab on running back or wide receiver. The number 11 team went Chase, Fournette, Etienne, and Harris. So same kind of situation as the team prior. You know, wide receiver one followed up with three straight running backs. And honestly, I don't hate those running backs either. Leonard Fournette, Travis Etienne, and Damian Harris. You have a, a mixture of pass catchers with both Fournette and Etienne and a solid ground and pound guy that has touchdown upside in Damian Harris. So honestly, don't dislike that either. The wide receiver two in Amari Cooper. That's going to be a big if with whatever happens to Deshaun Watson. Then you also got Chase Edmonds, TJ Hawkinson, Jalen Hurts. Solid choice there. Tyler Boyd, who you sniped me on. Gus Edwards. Maybe didn't need Gus Edwards right there. Maybe you could have taken maybe like a Rashad White instead and kind of handcuffed Leonard Fournette a little bit. Then we got the Saints, Damian Pierce, Van Jefferson, who I do love late as well, Corey Davis, and, De and Donta Foreman. Then lastly, my team. Obviously, we talked about it as we went through, but we got Chubb and Jones with Pollard, Hines, and Daryl Williams. Now, I will be the first one to admit that I wish I had a more solid running back three. I kind of got my two running back two slots filled, right? RB1 and RB2 filled with Chubb and Jones. 100%. Pollard, Hines, and Williams, I'm going to need one of those guys to pop off. Now, obviously, we're going to practice what we preach around here, right? And I'm big on Tony Pollard, and that's why I took him where I did with high expectations. For wide receivers, I think I have a lot of depth at wide receiver. Michael Pittman, Allen Robinson, Juju, Elijah Moore, Devontae Parker, and Jahan Dotson. I'm probably going to be starting a lot more wide receivers every week than I will be running backs, but that's okay because I feel like all the guys that I got have the opportunity for 100-plus receptions, maybe with the exception of Jahan Dotson and Jalen Tolbert there at the very end, right? Two rookies that I kind of just took a stab on late, but Parker, Moore, Juju, A-Rob, and Pittman, 
I think we, uh, I don't think any of us would be surprised if all of those guys had over 100 receptions. Maybe not huge touchdown totals, but a ton of receptions. Followed up with George Kittle. Didn't take a second tight end. There will be others I can probably stream at some point. Maybe even it's like a Hayden Hurst. I can pair him up with Joe Burrow if needed at some point. Uh, but yeah, overall, solid team. I, I don't dislike that team whatsoever. I don't know if it has a huge, huge ceiling, but it's a definitely a safe floor team here at the number 12 when you're going in back-to-back -back picks. But like I said during the draft, if you're going to invest this much time into mock drafting and having a good time with it, you might as well not only be critical of others, but be critical of yourself too. Like I said during the draft, I probably should have taken another higher tier running back to give me some more added depth. I didn't. I'm self-critical because of that, and that's what's going to make me better going forward, and it's going to make you better as well. So make sure after you mock draft, you take a look at the overall draft board and really dissect what you should have done differently, and then go at it again and see what you come up with. I guarantee it's going to make you a better fantasy football player. Now, I didn't set a light goal at the beginning of the video. I didn't want to get too wordy to start off with, but there is going to be a light goal. So if you want to be in the running for a free draft guide, we got to get this video over a thousand likes. So hit that like button, leave a comment down below of what you thought about this draft. And I look forward to interacting with you guys down below there. I'm trying to be as interactive as I can. I'm trying to respond to as many comments in every single video. I sit there in bed every night with my phone and I just answer comments probably for longer than I should. It's probably the reason why I don't sleep very much, but I'm trying to make sure that you guys have that opportunity to interact back with us. So hopefully you enjoy that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Welcome to Headliner Nation. Come join the family and be a part of the brother and sisterhood that is an absolute domination of fantasy football. But until the next video, I'm going to hop out of here now for the day. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, a great week. We'll talk to you later. I'm a headliner.